3D printing something that actually functions, that sounds amazing. How did you do that? Yeah, so with the particular hand that we ended up choosing, it ended up being a mechanical hand, uh, which, which was easy to really produce because there's no electronics in it. Um, and it was cheap um, and cost efficient for the, for the family that was involved. Um, and, and typically with 3D printing, I would say the most common misconception is uh, a lot of people think everything's 3D printed. So when you do design something, everything's 3D printed. In this case, um, it's a composite. And composites is really the important part of 3D printing. You're 3D printing certain parts, and then you're using other types of materials to really bring things together. So you need so good design there, as well as just the, 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 the science of putting the mechanics together. Correct. So the 3D print really needs to be able to mesh well with other types of materials um, to, to bring it together. Um, and so, for, for example, this particular hand that we used um, in this project, uh, the fingers, um, the, the wrist brace, the, the palm were 3D printed. Um, and then what really brought that together is we had, you know, hardware, screws, uh, wire, um, leather to form um, some of the places where the hands are going to be making connection with the prosthetic to bring everything together to make it functional for the child. Now, every patient is an individual and every impairment is potentially completely different from the impairments in another patient. So how did you marry up the patient with the device? Yeah, so the files that you get um, from open source uh, sites like Enable, um, they're, they're modifiable. So you can really take those files, modify them uh, to meet the need, needs of the child. Um, for example, the original files that we got uh, didn't fit the child's hand. So we needed to modify them to one just to fit the child's hand. Um, and then two, we need to modify them to be a little bit more robust so that they could be put into a more loaded type of situation versus these hands are typically used for grasping things. Um, so again, we can modify it to meet the needs of the child in terms of hanging on that horizontal bar. So you have a child who's capable of making movements of their natural hand, although it is impaired, and using those same movements to get exactly the movements you need to grip something like a horizontal bar. Yeah, so we would try to merge those two together so we could see what, she, what preserved function she has. And we assessed that to see where she stood prior to making the hand. So then from there, we could make the hand really work for her specifically based on her preserved function in that hand. How confident were you before you started this? Because it sounds a daunting task. Yeah, so this is the first uh, application of this type for me, uh, as well as for Dr. Anderson. And so um, we were worried, one, for safety, because typically these hands are used for grasping objects, right? Picking up a cup picking up a ball. Um, what we were doing is putting it now full body weight and loading it on a horizontal bar, which changes the dynamics uh, pretty drastically. So um, safety was our big concern. And so as we designed the hand and tested it out, uh, really it was a staging type of stepwise progression. We started her hanging with half body weight to full body weight that's close to the ground. And then we would see how the hand reacted you know, do a little bit of swinging, see how the hand reacted. Um, and as we progressed, we figured out that the 3D print was holding fairly well. We had to make a few modifications, but then we could get her to be full hanging from a, you know, a normal horizontal bar. And, and how happy are you and how happy is your patient with this device? I was really pleased with the outcomes. I wasn't expecting to have such a, a smooth transition from um, starting this project to ending it. Um, and so I would say those types of outcomes really transferred to the patient who really could fully participate in her gymnastics class. And so which changed, you know, really the outlook on her progression through gymnastics. You know, instead of staying in the same uh, level of gymnastics over and over again, she now could move to the next one along with her peers, uh, which made a big difference for her in terms of her acceptance of that activity uh, and gymnastics in general. I suppose the uh, 2004, 2024 Olympics is too much of a target, but is that possible because your patient's about the right age, isn't she? Well, yeah, and there's, and there's you know, I would say there's prosthetics out there that have helped people perform at really high levels. 
Um, the prosthetic we were designing was working at a really low level of activity in terms of what type of gymnastic skills that, 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 that the child was doing. But how much difference did that make to the child's life and her enjoyment of activities? Yeah, so the enjoyment increased a lot because now she could fully participate with her peers for all the activities in her gymnastics class uh, versus struggling through some of those horizontal bar activities uh, like she was before the prosthetic hand came into play. So what messages would you send out to clinicians out there and physical therapists especially around the world about using 3D printing and about marrying this to children with impairments and, and helping them do things they had no idea they would be able to do? Yeah, so I think uh, it comes down to cost effectiveness and I think with standard um, uh, prosthetics, they're, they're they take, some, they take some time, they cost a lot, and, and especially for a child that's growing, um, 3D printed prosthetics is a good route to start um, to help improve just daily living or daily function, uh, specifically with recreational activities. Because 3D printing is so adaptable, um, you can meet the needs of your patient um, pretty efficiently um, and have some pretty good outcomes. And so a very brief take-home message for physical therapists would be what? Uh, 3D printing is on the rise. So keep your eyes out for these types of applications in, in PT. Um, and don't be afraid of them. Uh, I think the resources are out there to help guide um, the use of these types of, of, of technologies in, in physical therapy.